done. Please take your seats on a beautiful Tuesday night. I hope you have taken time to greet your neighbor and welcome them. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you. It's good to see all of you on a Tuesday evening. We are talking about declaration. Would you please bring, help me to bring my declarations there? Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Bishop Nyaba, for visiting, as you always. And thank you for all other visitors. If you are coming here for the first time, maybe we should do that. Lift up your hands so that I may acknowledge you and see. Ah, there's the, the beautiful couple there, Pastor Tombo and the wife. Please stand. Let's welcome you. These are pastors from AFM, Pastor Tombo. I think I'm pronounced not Tombo, but Tombo, isn't it? It's a T-O, eh? T-O-M-P-O. Thank you for being here, ma'am, I say, and ma'am, thank you. Thank you for visiting us today. Oh, you brought, you brought, oh, please stand. Uh, are these your tribe? This is your tribe. You have a large tribe indeed. Let's put our hands together for the tribe. The tribe of Israel. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And, uh, sorry? Yeah, you can sit here, pastors. Come and sit here, please. Yeah, yeah, come and sit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come. Don't be shy. Thank you. All right. Who else? I saw these. Who else is here for the first time? All right. You know, we are dealing with uh, declarations. We allocate two months per topic. We find that such teachings ground the church you will know that the church does not grow by anything else but by teaching. If you want a solid church that would prevail in many circumstances, we must as leaders spend time teaching people. Yes, let's prophesy, but you can't prophesy eight to eight. You prophesy to shallow people, lay a foundation and teach continuously. So January, February, we talked of different levels of anointings or different end types of anointings. <clears throat> then we dealt March, April, backsliding. And then May, June, end time events and signs. Then July, August, church planting, church growth, evangelism. And now we are dealing with the mega church and its benefits. That's our September and October. We will close the year with the principles of prosperity and wealth creation. Thank you so much. I hope it's not too heavy for you. When you're okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what we've done for years, taking six subjects and dealing with them, and it makes it easier for anyone to understand. All right. We are dealing with prophecies concerning the mega church. Prophecies concerning Churches, that will be large, mega dendrums of churches. You churches that will impact nations, impact society. It's good to have a big church, not only a big building, but big church full of many, many people. All right. Because there are many benefits to a big church versus a small church. However, every church begins small. So don't despise the beginning of a small church. Over time, as you apply the principles of soul winning, evangelism, churches grow. That's why we have chairs here. We want to order 5,000 more, more churches so that there will be 10,000, 2 more thousand so that there will be 12,000 plastic chairs here. Okay, in preparation of your husbands and your wives that are not yet here. They are drinking beer, some of them, so they must come to the house of God. Say amen. So if you can't find them here, they are coming. 
Yeah. Glory to God. All right. I want to start by reading First Timothy now. Verses 1 to 18. The scripture reads, this is the apostle Paul is writing to his dearly beloved son. He says, this charge I commit unto thee. And he calls this young man his son. He said, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. And he says, my charge to you is fight the good fight. It's important that when you receive a prophetic word, you contend for it. Many people who are not schooled in the prophetic believe that if you receive a prophetic word, it will just happen while you just enjoy yourself and eat pizza and ice cream and so forth. It won't. You have to contend for it. Every word of God, this is contention. Yeah, this word was given 20 something years. We have to contend for it. Okay. So everything about your life, our music team, our choirs that are recording, contention, you have to contend for a prophetic word. In other words, you war for it. Yeah, because the enemy will tell you it won't happen. But you must stand up and tell him, you are a liar devil. This thing will come to pass. Maybe you are sitting here as a young lady, you have been told you can't marry because everybody in your family fails to get married. You will marry. You have to contend and say, I am the exception. I will get married. Yeah, you will find some dude who will find you very attractive. It doesn't matter whether you look like a bus behind the bus. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there will be someone who would like that look of a bus and say, this one is mine. I love buses, especially rural buses. And they will go for you. Whether you have 27 and a half kids, it doesn't matter. Amen. Yeah, someone is coming for you. You know, God is a master God. He always creates someone who matches your desire. Amen. Uh -huh. Because it's not true that everybody wants a skinny lady. There are some people that want yeah, four by fours. Yeah. So, so may you get a four by four. Aha! I see. Someone for you. Someone for you. Yeah. Someone for you. That's fine. Don't worry. Because uh, they don't want skinny people. Because those bones prick them. Mm. But they want flesh. Mm. And they don't mind this lady rolling over the bed because she is round. She falls over. Your job is to lift her up all night and placing her back on bed. Not at all. <laughs> so don't kill yourself. Don't retire and think uh, there is always someone who will love the way you are. Say amen. Don't be a, 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 a fake yellow bone. If you're a yellow bone, be a yellow bone. Yeah. This one has been a yellow bone for years. So, yeah, because I can tell this is real yellow bone. Stand up, yellow bone. Yeah. That's a yellow bone. Mm. Yeah. But this is, this is chocolate. Stand up, chocolate. This is chocolate. Look at this. Aha. So, yellow bone and chocolate must coexist. Yeah. Because there are people that don't like yellow bone. Why am I talking about all this? I, I'm supposed to preach here. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting into all this. All this. Am I preaching? Mm. No, no, no. I must get into the message soon. <laughs> so, yeah. There are others that prefer chocolate. There are others that prefer yellow bone. There are others that prefer those that are green. Mm. Yeah, green. I bet people with green eyes. Mm. Nigel, green eyes. When they look at you, you just melt. Yeah. But I've met people with brown eyes or dark eyes. Yeah. When they look at you, you think, yeah, am I gone here? <laughs> <laughs> Father, I know it's your word as we share it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Paul is writing to his son. And in writing to his son, he says, contend for the prophecies that have been given you. Never fail to contend for that which God gave you. You may lose it and believe that it was in God or it was a wrong word for you. It is your posture that determines the outcome of that word. Say amen. Don't give up on it. Contend for it. 
And therefore there are prophecies here that I will give it to you. Oh, I've been giving you these prophecies. They are all to do with end time churches. Mega churches. Churches that are big. Yeah. Massive, massive churches. So we may be few here because we just started seven months, but we are mega church. I'm mega inside. I don't know about you. I am big inside. Amen. Yeah, tell your neighbor I'm very big inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that means bigness is no choice but to manifest here. Say amen. Mm -hmm. So contend, young man. That prophecy that was given to you, fight for it until it manifests. And some of these uh, prophecies, you may think they were written to the Jews. But let me answer you with Romans here so that you, you get to see that when God is writing to the Jews, he's writing to you, the church. Watch the scripture here. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Are you getting that? He is not a Jew who is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Maybe a young man, you are not circumcised. You think, I'm not a Jew. Paul says it doesn't count. Watch what counts. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he circumcises your heart. In other words, he changes your heart transforms your heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of man but of God so with that foundation I want you to lift up your hands and say I am a Jew or a Jewess say I'm a Jew or a Jewess whoever you are so there are prophecies therefore that we've been talking about we ended up with prophecy number 12 let me run through them quickly and then we can deal with the seven outstanding ones and Sunday possibly finish. They shall be a rise of mountain like churches. They shall be a rise of mountain like churches. We say to you a mountain looms and looms larger. A mountain is a big thing. It's not a hill. No, it's a mountain. And therefore when God equates the end time church to a mountain you know that church is going to be strong. Say amen. amen. Isaiah 2, verse 2 to 3, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house, you notice this, it is the mountain of the Lord's house. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Right now, the church may seem like it's weak and anemic and it's ineffective, the church of God in the body of Christ but you are making a mistake. Down upon other tribes, God will not give you. So you must therefore change your mind, understand that nations are simple boundaries. God loves people. Say amen. He loves all manner of people. The brown, yellow, green, white, he loves people. And therefore we must love people as he does. And there is Zechariah says, 8, 21, 23. And the inhabitants of one city shall go into another, or go to another, saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Verse 22. Yeah, say yeah. And many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and pray before the Lord. What a blessing the church of God will be. Number three. And teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that were called Niger, and he mentions all this. But let's go to verse 2. Check the things in the Bible. There's no angel like that written. We only know of Michael and Gabriel. So when you get that revelation that is not in the word of God, you are in trouble. Don't speak it because it doesn't line up with the word of God. So be very firm about any information you get that's not in the Bible. Discard it. Don't take it. If I stand up here and preach and you don't see anything lining up with you, don't receive it. It will send you to hell. So any preaching must be supported by the word of God. Yeah. Then we had these angels. Yeah. Rabbina, Samuel, and all these. They're given names. 
And this man says, yeah, he went somewhere and got all these names. And we have ship there saying, amen, amen. Where is it in the word of God? Where is it in the word of God? Please. Anything that does not line up with the word of God, you put it away. Put it away. Don't take it. Don't receive it. Don't receive it from me. It must line up with the word of God. Say amen. So it is that assignment then of prophets and teachers that has us reading almost two-thirds of the New Testament is coming from this assignment. The builders of the church. Number 12. There shall be a rise of prosperity that will build the cities of God. I said to you on Sunday, mega finances are coming. I know you are broke right now. Please look at your neighbor and say, I don't need to be a prophet. Just looking at your eyes, they are red. You have no money, I can tell. Hmm. You have no money. Hmm. You have no money. Right now, as I'm teaching, you're thinking, how will you kia kia? And how you are kia kia even when you are here. <laughs> Because as, as soon as you leave and you put on your phone, your landlord will be saying, where is my rent? <laughs> it's pressure. It's real. But we are praying that in these end times, God will supernaturally empower people that he can trust. He can trust. And trust stems from simple tithing. If you can tithe a dollar, from ten dollars, he will trust you with a million dollars. Say amen. He will trust you with a million dollars. Zechariah 1:17. Cry yet, say, that say the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall choose Jerusalem. So his cities will be built through prosperity. The houses of God will flourish. Hey. In these days we, that are coming, we won't be bothered by pledge. Someone will stand up like Nigel and say, Bishop, you want to build a 20,000 seater? I will build it myself. I will not allow anyone else to contribute. Yeah. You just build, give me the bills of quantities. I will sponsor everything, including the furniture and the carpet and everything else. One person. How many here believe that if God empowers you, you are able to build the house of God. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because you have no money. That's why it's easy to say that. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely. Show me by lifting up your hand. If God gave you $50 million, would you say $30 million I give it to the house of God? Sure. If you're like that, stand up. Let me see you standing up. Who says, chips chips. I pray that your heart is like that. Because if your heart is like that, God will move on your behalf. I told God long back, Lord, if you give me money, I will give it to you. I will give it to building your house. And I've done that. Yeah. There is no one who is given money more than me here. Nobody. No one can stand and say, hey, Bishop, not even you. Not even you, my guy. <laughs> Nobody. Because it's a covenant that I made with God. That if you place me with resources, I will build your house. I will do that. Any need that I see, I will put in there. Don't you think I'm a good candidate for resources of God to come to my... Yeah. Hey, let them come. So is that your wish as well? Because he will test you, God. Yeah, he will test you. He may test you as you live here and we see. So lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, I'm praying for these great men and women. They are making a vow, a covenant with you. That is, you empower them supernaturally. They are stating that they are able to build your house. Trust them, Lord, and try them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Can I give you five more before we go now? We're ready to go. We need to go just now. So this prosperity that is coming has been prophesied by many prophets. End time wealth. With a purpose. To build 
the things of God, to build houses of God. Above all, souls. If you can tie your money to any activity that brings souls, God will increase you. Yeah. Not to buying suits. It was He was laying a foundation. <laughs> foundational work is difficult. I don't know about you. Any foundational work is difficult. We put foundation here. You are sitting on 594 30 ton trucks that are buried here. The sand that came through. Because of this land was like that. 594 truck after truck. In fact, one of our pastor's trucks, several of them perished here. We used them here. There were about four or five of them. They were moving, cutting, decomposed soil and bringing it here continuously. Yet, you were not seeing any improvement at all. Let me show you something that brings quick results. The walls. The walls. Today you may live, tomorrow you find that the wall is there and up there. It is this thing called foundation. Foundational work for anything is painful. So Zerubbabel got tired as they laid the foundation. Yeah, he was giving up and the prophets came in. That's where you see Zechariah 4 verse 6. Zechariah is prophesying into this situation. I know you always claim, eh, not by might, not by power. But the context is this man was tired. The dude was building. And he got so tired. Wanted to give up. Zechariah said, not by my, put Zechariah 4, 6 so that they will see. So that you will see that, uh, that that scripture is important. So 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I didn't put it in my notes. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to who now? Can you see that dude then? <laughs> he is the builder. To Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Give me verse 7. So that, so that these guys begin to understand. Verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain? He was facing a mountain and laying a foundation. It is not the mountain of the Lord. It was another mountain that he was facing. Who are you, O mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Watch now. You shall begin, you shall become plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone. Do you know what the capstone is? We have capstones outside. The cornerstones that we put when you put papers, the cornerstone, they are called capstones. Okay, capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. You need grace when you are building. Watch then the next verse. Who, next verse, eight. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Verse 9. The hands, watch now, the clearer verse now. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid what? The foundation. Can you see? Zechariah 4, verse 6 is given to people who are laying a foundation. It could be a physical foundation or a spiritual foundation. Yeah. Don't claim that verse if you're not laying any foundation. It only applies to people who are laying a foundation. Here I'm laying a foundation on a church. So I can stand on that. We laid a foundation on the physical one. But we're laying on a foundation in your life. Okay. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall what? Finish it. <laughs> stand up, stand up, stand up just one more time. This is a prophetic word given only to those that lay foundations. Why do people hate small churches? Because they don't want to lay foundations. Unless you have a certain gifting, apostolic gifting, to start things and see them flourish, you can't enjoy small things. Me, I'm not moved with small things. I love them, in fact. I enjoy this. I enjoy this. I can move from here and preach multitudes. But this foundational work is good. 